Connor, if this was your last game here in Erie? Uh, it's not my last game here in Erie. It's essentially a guarantee. A guarantee that not only will the series return to Erie, but tonight will not be his last game of his junior hockey career. And no louder were those words heard than in Oshawa. Our guys are really hungry as well, and uh, they want to finish it off tonight. It's a game that will be woven into the storyline of his career. As a guarantee fulfilled or failed. Next. Look outside General Motors Center in Oshawa, home of the Generals, 12-time OHL champions. They're looking to make that 13 tonight and close out Connor McDavid and the Erie Otters. Game 5, Oshawa leads the series 3-1. to one. Have a look inside the room. There's your Red Tilson Award winner as top player in the OHL. All eyes on Connor McDavid. Was it a guarantee? Who knows? But he is a supremely confident athlete with supreme talent to boot. Talk about talent. How about Cole Castles, the Vancouver prospect? has lived in McDavid's pocket all series long, and with last change, you can bet that DJ Smith, the head coach of the Oshawa Generals, will make sure that matchup stays intact tonight. Welcome inside the Friday Night Hockey Studios. I'm Jeff Merrick, joined by John Shannon and Damian Cox. Now, earlier on this week, we saw the Kelowna Rockets knock off the Brandon Wheat Kings, swept them in four straight. So, we now have three of the four finalists who will compete in the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The only question now is... Who comes out of the Ontario League? And maybe Oshawa answers that question tonight. They'd like nothing more than to send Connor McDavid to the NHL on a losing note. With more on tonight's matchup, we head to the rink and say good evening to Rob Falls. Faldi? Jeff, thanks very much. This place is absolutely sold out. Not a ticket to be had, even with John Shannon kind of money. It is going to be loud, 6,000 plus on hand with Oshawa leading the series 3-1. DJ Smith said his team has to play with composure. Yes, they have to worry about 97, but they also have to worry about playing their game. Chris Knobloch says, don't press. He knows you cannot win a game in the first 10 minutes. If the team plays its game, it could have success here at the GM Center. Here are two very successful guys in our broadcast booth, RJ Broadhead and Sam Cosentino. Thank you for that, Rob. Connor McDavid had six points in the two games in Erie. The concern, though, is how he's performed here at General Motors Center in Oshawa. In the first two games, he only produced one assist, and he's not alone on this Erie Otters roster as far as struggling in this building. And they better figure it out, Sam, or their season will be done. Yeah, it's been really tough for Erie to play in this building. I mean, the three times that they've played it, they've scored just three goals. And you look at Connor McDavid, Dylan Strom, and Alex to break it all over 100 points throughout the course of the regular season. But here, at GM Center, just unable to really get it done. If you look at the power play, one for nine, Erie really goes as its power play goes, so that's something they're gonna have to figure out here in this game. Reminding you that Connor McDavid did not play in the one game here in the regular season, but as you mentioned, just one point in the first two here in the playoffs. Talking to both coaches before the games and what was the difference in games one and two, both of them talked about matchups and DJ Smith will get the matchup he wants and it'll be Cole Castles going up against the McDavid line quite a bit. Well, he's a 200 foot player. There's nothing that this guy doesn't do and doesn't do well. He's the son of Andrew Castles, so you know he's got that NHL bloodline within him and he knows the game extremely well, but you look at in the wins here of the 20 games, 15 of those wins, Cole Castles has been absolutely outstanding. In the losses, not so much. But throughout the course of the series, hard to argue with eight points through the first four games. He defends well, he gets under Connor McDavid's skin, and he produces what a steal for the Vancouver Canucks in the third round a couple of years ago. Here he faces elimination for the first time in this postseason. We'll see if Connor McDavid can back up his words, Jeff. And RJ, sticking with the Connor McDavid theme alongside John Shannon and Damian Cox, regardless of this uh, tonight in Game 5 or 6 or 7 or the Memorial Cup, we will air Connor McDavid's last game <laughs> in junior hockey. However, here's the question. Does it happen tonight? And how much do you read into the guarantee that 
fell a little bit short of becoming a Messier-esque guarantee. Damon. Well, I'm going to say it wasn't exactly a guarantee. To me, it sounded, and when you hear the clip, the entire thing, it sounds a little bit more like teenage defiance. And I have a teenager, and I know what teenage defiance sounds like, and that's what it sounded like to me. He said, no, it's not my last game in Erie. Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> and and that, that's what it kind of sounded like. He's not a boastful kid. He's not a kid who's, who's prone to go out and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I think that this was really him sort of I'm probably a little bit emotional. Even though he's ready for the National Hockey League, he's probably not ready to say goodbye to junior hockey. It's meant a lot to him. He's gone from a teenage, the exceptional teenager, to being a star around that you know the people now know really uh, not just uh, around Canada but yeah. right around the world and so there's an attachment for him and doggone it he doesn't want to let these generals be the guys to end it well there is one other player on this team that we expect to be back in junior hockey next year and that's Dylan Strom who there are times particularly in the last two series you have to wonder if his foot speed is playing a factor now Hard to imagine. We're talking a guy that has 22 points in the OHL playoffs, so it's not disappointing. A golden assist in the last game. But you have to wonder, with all the scouts and everybody looking at this guy, probably in a top five position, maybe higher in Damien's list, this is one of those guys you have to wonder if he's just too young to worry about the situation of being mature enough right now. To me, he's under the spotlight as well. But when we look at you know things like the OHL final and we look at the World of Junior, essentially these are... These are moments built for, in junior hockey, 19-year-olds. Yes. He's only 17, John. Do we put too much on him? Probably. But, I mean, that's the hype that goes around this hockey club, I think, particularly, Damien, when you think about McDavid. And everybody gets compared to McDavid and everybody mm -hmm. who plays on that same stage. And a lot of what goes on, particularly in southern Ontario, Dylan Strom probably being and hopefully being a Toronto Maple Leaf, that's becoming a little bit big, bigger factor. A quick thought on the goalie matchup as well. Ken Appleby has been fantastic. Oshawa brings in Zach Burke to help work with him. He's wow. been the beneficiary of that. And Devin Williams, who last year, you know, uh, took the number one net mining spot away from Oscar Dansk in Erie. How do you handicap this one? Well, I mean, Appleby, I mean, we shouldn't be surprised at all with what he's done, even in the regular season. Lost only seven of 49 games and really is a backbone. Hasn't been challenged as much as people realize in this series. And in fact, allowed nine goals in the last two games and was able to come out with a split one and one, including the game, the overtime game on Wednesday night. Appleby to me is a key. So is this guy. I've been waiting for Devin Williams to fail all playoffs and he has let me down every game because he's played so darn well and has been one of the reasons why they're at this point. But but let's let's be honest. Game four, neither one of these no. guys was very good. They yeah. combined, I think, for an 833 save percentage. They both really struggled, and you know what? In junior hockey, in a game with a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, a lot of open ice, look, they win the game the other night because Mason Marchman flicks the puck over the net, yeah. and then they end up giving one up. I, I think Appleby is seen as the better goaltender, but really other than game two, as you say, has he been tested? And in game four, neither one of these no. guys was great, so... You know, when we've been watching guys like Lundqvist and Holtby go head-to-head -head in the NHL playoffs, this hasn't been that kind of a goaltending matchup mm -hmm. so far, but it could be tonight. It could be. As one scout told me today, it seemed as if pucks that Appleby stops seems to go through. Devin Williams, we'll see what that matchup looks like this evening. Don't forget, next Friday, where are we going to be, guys? Uh, Quebec City. Quebec City for Game 1 of the MasterCard Memorial nice Cup. That's going to be fantastic. I hear the sidewalks roll up early. <laughs> Not so much. The first game is the Colorado. Don't Rockets give away the secrets. Against the Quebec Ramparts. Meanwhile, we have business in Oshawa. Game five, Jenny's and the Otters. Friday Night Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. The Oshawa Generals coming off a big overtime victory in Game 4 against the Erie Otters. Can they carry that right into Game 5? Let's head to General Motors Center and welcome back in Rob Falls. Fallsy? Standing by with Connor McDavid. Connor, you said you want to take this back to Erie. What kind of game do you have to play tonight to make that happen? I think that we played a good game in Game 4. I think we got to do a lot of the same stuff. Uh, we deserve a better fate last night, but uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. You know, the coach told us that you guys can't press too early. You can't win a game in the first 10 minutes. You have to bide your time, find your openings. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, we've been doing that a little bit too much. We've been pressing too hard early in the game, and uh, we've been having to dig ourselves out of holes. But, um, you know, just got to keep an even keel all game long. Connor, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Connor McDavid, he is focused and ready. And so, too, are these guys, R.J. Broadhead and Sam Cosentino.
Connor McDavid looked very relaxed before this game. Here's Devin Williams. 19-year-old from Saginaw, Michigan. He is the starting goalie of the Erie Otters, but in this series, he's allowed 18 goals in the four games. He will have to have a spectacular effort tonight in game five in Oshawa. Ken Appleby turned 20 in April. He's from North Bay. Last time he allowed five goals against in a playoff game, he bounced back with a shutout and then went five straight games after that where he didn't allow more than two goals in a game so he is looking for a bounce back effort even though his team did come out with a 6-5 overtime win in game four in Erie. Connor McDavid the most dominant player in junior hockey his team down 3-1 to the Oshawa Generals no one would be surprised if the Generals win this series but all of us fans just can't wait to see what Connor McDavid can do tonight with his team facing elimination. He does not start on the opening line in game five. Taylor Radish, he's taken care of behind the net by Stephen DeRoche, who's really had a coming out party for Oshawa in this postseason. Mitch Van de Sample jumps into the rush, Matt Mistily just missed the net. Mistily can really fire the puck, and you know what, RJ, those are the type of chances Oshawa can take when McDavid's not on the ice, because if you start to come down the ice with three guys and you get caught, it's an odd man going the other way. Without McDavid out there, you have an opportunity to get back into play, so a good chance for Oshawa early. Van de Sample lead pass. That finds Hunter Smith. He'll send it into the Otter zone. Cole Cassis, first man on it. Bumps with Patrick Murphy down there. And the crowd here at General Motors Center is fired up. The Go Gens Go chant is echoing through the building. Roche with a shot that goes off a leg into the corner. Travis Dermott, he worked hard to get that puck loose. Move it to the open side. Patrick Murphy progresses it ahead, but the Brinkett couldn't handle it, and the Generals take over again. That big bump by Castles. Expect a lot out, out of him in this game. He does it all for the Oshawa Generals. And a little bit surprising that the Castles line came out against... Dylan Strom, another hit at center. Crowd likes the physical play that the Generals exhibit. Mike McCarron threw that heavy check, and now he picks off a pass at center and sends it back into the outer zone. Here we having trouble making their way into the Oshawa. Murphy, he's been out there a while, looking for somebody open. Showing some patience as he gets to the red line. Now he dumps it in, and he'll get his change. Nick Betts off the bench, chipped it behind the net. Connor McDavid's out there now. Can't track it down before Peterson moves it ahead to Martin McCarron, and his shot is wide of the goal, but picked up by Tobias Lindbergh. There's a sharp angle blast, stopped by Williams, and he had to be quick to get over. Lindbergh moves it to Latour. He tried to shoot from a sharp angle, but missed the net. Right away, you see Castles come out there with McDavid. They want that matchup as much as they can, Oshawa. Well, he got a shot. It was gloved aside by Appleby. Genovese, not much on it. But David tried to tuck it in. He couldn't do it. That looked like a great opportunity for Connor McDavid to open the scoring. A shot that was partially fanned on turned into a pretty good pass to McDavid. There's a high shot that goes off the shoulder of Williams and out of play. Well, you heard Connor McDavid uh, in the post game in game four making all but a guarantee and not really using those words as it goes back to Genovese, a big blast here and ends up on McDavid's stick. He tries to tuck it underneath that left pad and can't quite do so. And an excellent reactionary save there by Ken Appleby as he gets his first touch of the game. Oshawa Generals one win away from punching their ticket to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Erie trying to push this series to a game six, which would take place Sunday in Erie. Sam Harden goes back to the line, makes Van de Sample, the mobile defenseman, gets to the middle of the ice. Off it in front of the net, it hit some bodies and didn't get through to Williams. Ken Appleby, he rips it around the boards, Marshman can't catch up to it, and Shurik gets it outside the zone. Pass to center, Travis Dermott. He's draft eligible, and he has emerged in this postseason as well for Chris Knobloch's Iriotis. And no question, the leading scorer amongst all defensemen in the Ontario Hockey League in the playoffs. And he can play a nasty game, too. Physical hit behind the net on Sorelli. Anthony Sorelli, the youngest player in this Oshawa lineup. 17-year-old trying to work his way out of the corner. This is the top scoring line for the Generals. Michael Dell Cole leads them in points. Matt Mistley plays there, too, but 
It was DeBrinket with a steal. Baptiste takes the shot. That turned into an easy save for Ken Appleby, and he hangs on. Well, you're up 3 1 in the series. You come back home. The crowd's fired up in there, early tailgating. And you know what? You're anxious to get out on the ice. So Ken Appleby leading the charge, knocks a puck off. He gets out in the ice. They say, No, no, hang on, put on the brakes. You have to wait till the exact 15 minute mark. And so the officials pull Appleby a couple of the generals back. But you can tell that they are amped up for the start of this hockey game, led by their goaltender, who's looked sharp early on. Dylan Strom on the face off. Gets it back to the line, Darren Radish lofted it on goal. There was no traffic in front of Appleby, so he saw that one all the way. DJ Smith is the head coach for the Oshawa Generals, named the coach of the year last year in the Ontario Hockey League, has continued to do a great job with this hockey club. And you look at DJ Smith with MasterCard Memorial Cup experience as an associate coach with the Windsor Spitfires in 09 and 2010, and has leaned on that group to help him out and support him here in this series. Curtis McDermott. Son of Paul McDermott kept that punk in. He'll be a physical presence back there for Erie. Tobias Lindbergh, the Ottawa Senators pick. He can flat out fly. He can score too. That one's blocked by McDermott. A fearless shot blocked by the Erie defenseman. A big, strong, tough guy. He probably hurt the puck. Defense <laughs> takes a shot. It's off the leg. Went wide of the net. Michael McCarran, he's used to playing into late May when he was a member of the London Knights. Lindbergh can't make his way around Genovese. Here's Dylan Strom, led the Ontario Hockey League in scoring this season. Drops it off for Mason Marchman. That didn't work out. Sorelli got there in time to knock the puck out. That's where Strom is really good, RJ. He gets across the line. He's pensive, and he likes to make plays there. But Oshawa really tightened that gap up on him there and really didn't give him a lot of space to make any play. Kyle Maximovich and Mitch Van de Sample. Staring at each other, waiting to see which one would flinch. Van de Sample got the puck out to center ice. McDavid is on the ice, but the puck is touched with a glove, so play is stopped. Chris Knobloch is uh, used to being an underdog in very big series. You go back to his experience with the Kootenai Ice in 2011, up against a very strong Portland Winterhawks team. They disassembled that Winterhawks team. Won the series in five games, made their way to Mississauga and the MasterCard Memorial Cup comes over to the Ontario Hockey League. And with Erie, he too has done a fantastic job with this hockey club. A very cerebral guy, very well prepared, very thought out, and a good communicator with his players. Cal Cole quickly ahead. Mistily might get a chance to shoot. Wooden fire. The Otters got back in time. Troy Darnay, property of the New York Rangers. Wraps the puck around. Taylor Radish tried to go rink wide with that feed to Jake Marchmont, and it was off his stick and goes out of play. Roger Hunt is the general manager of the Oshawa Generals, and he made a couple of key acquisitions throughout the course of the season. One was getting Mike McCarron and Dakota Mermis. The other is that guy right there, number 20, Matt Mistily, who a couple of years ago was highly thought of, so highly thought of, in fact, people were talking about him going in the first round. He slipped to the sixth round of the L.A. Kings, Gets traded over from Plymouth, and he has just been dynamite playing an all-around physical game. Shoots the puck like a pro already, and they just feel that if they can work on his skating, that the LA Kings will have another steal and yet another late-round pick. Connor McDavid is on the ice for Erie. His previous shift was just 18 seconds. We fully expect his shifts will be a lot longer than that as this game goes on. Cole Castles in his line of Hunter Smith and Bradley Latour out there as well. And right now they're making the McDavid line defense. Thermich pass. That finds Baptiste. He was looking for McDavid, couldn't get it to him. And Smith, the Calgary pick, comes the other way. Latour puts another one near the front of the net. Castles got a stick on it. Now Cole Castles. He was drafted by Vancouver. Spinning, turning, keeping possession. Now finally sends it in deep for big Hunter Smith to work in game. Puck wrapped around. Here's Connor McDavid and not far away. Cole Castles was right there. Castles has the puck in his own zone. The son of Andrew Castles over to Josh Brown. He goes up the middle, nearly picked up by DeBrinket. He had to backtrack to come up with it. McDavid, stick handling in the Oshawa zone. Tried to get a shot away. Not much on it. It trickles to Appleby and he hangs on. Connor McDavid's had some chances early in game five. Still scoreless. Cool. Castle's wearing the A for DJ Smith, and you can see him just kind of standing, hanging around the bench. And 
Maybe here's why he's not so active right now. Dermot pushes him into the boards. He goes in shoulder and head first. He would remain on the ice for a short time and a little later on the same shift. He goes to try and throw a hit and you can see him just kind of grimacing and not a whole lot of activity there as he goes off for a change. So we'll definitely monitor the situation of Cole Castles who has been such a huge piece. Named a star in three of the four games so far in the series. He did walk down the runway toward the Oshawa General's dressing room during the commercial break, but he is back on the bench. McCarron and Strom on the faceoff. It'll come back to the line. Don A. Locks it wide of the net, hoping to play the angle and have a bounce in front. Remy Alley barreling around back there, but Stephen DeRoche didn't let him get a scoring chance. And Michael Dalcole, first round pick of the Islanders in this past round. That shot was off the skate of Lindbergh and went off the side of the net. That had the crowd ooing and eyeing. Dylan Strong, Chris Knobloch saying before the game, his second line needs to be more like a 1B line. And that would be Dylan Strong's line. And how is that for a hit? Curtis McDermott on Mike McCarron. That's some mass meeting at center ice. And McCarron is some kind of hot. Just snapped the stick on the bench as he sits down. And it looked like... Might have clipped his knee with that hit. Remy Ellie looked up and saw Mr. Lee in front of him. There was nowhere to go. All kinds of red sweaters. Got the puck to Alex DeBrinket. DeBrinket's from Detroit. Turned 17 in December. What a season he had. 51 goals, 104 points. He needs a big game here for Erie as well with their backs against the wall. Lead pass for McDavid. And he wasn't quite onside. So he had to let it go. And it winds up an icing call. Curtis McDermott, uh, also property of LA King, signed as a free agent. McCarron comes through the middle of the ice, and uh, McDermott is not going to give him a pass. And, you know, it was such a huge element to get back into the lineup. He missed some games due to suspension. Did McDermott. He came back in the lineup, has played a ton of minutes, and he's one guy that can really match the size and physicality that Oshawa brings to the table on a nightly basis. Here he's able to get the puck to the corner. That turned into an interesting play because had McDavid touched that puck, it would have been offside. Faceoff would have been just outside the Oshawa blue line. Instead, they had to have a faceoff in their own end. Now they're working hard to try to defend and get the puck up. Gets to the high slot. Harding didn't have time to settle the puck and get a shot. Here come the Erie Otters. Long dump in by Jake Markman. He's an L.A. fan. Kyle Pettit barrels in there, but it's controlled, and the Generals are out to set. Matt Mistel. Ends it in, he's off for a change. Here's Patrick Murphy setting up shot behind his own goal. Connor McDavid, he's trying to find an opening, but look at Cole Castle, right with him the whole time. McDavid's found a bit of breathing room on the left wing side. Now he'll cut over to the right wing side, but right behind him is number 19. Fascinating to watch, Cole Castle shadowing Connor McDavid, who has some room, knocked away by Castle, following up his Baptiste. Next Baptiste from a sharp angle. Pass in front. The Brink had his stick tied up by Mermis. Didn't get a good shot away. He goes back to the line. Dermott takes a look at the net. There's no lane to shoot, so he fires it cross corner. Josh Brown off the skate of Latour. That'll work out for the Generals. Hunter Smith banks it down the ice, and this will be icing. Well, if he had his brothers, DJ Smith would have had exactly those five guys out there. Mervis and Brown in the back end, Latour, Smith, and Castles up front against Connor McDavid. And when you look at what does this last change mean when you're playing on home ice? Well, proof is in the pudding so far in this series. And Oshawa comes away with one assist, minus four in the first two games at home, where Chris Knobloch had the last change, ended up with six points there. Face-off win for the Otters. That resulted in a scoring chance for Remy Alley. Kelly, a pick of the Dallas Stars, moves it over to Troy Donne. Remy Kelly, who had 30 goals in the regular season, has four in this postseason. He's been snake bit a little. Chris Carlisle not letting any Kelly cut to the net. Now Kelly tosses him aside. Karen can't get it out. Donne high shots off the glove of DeRoche in front of the net. Then the defenseman retrieves it, sends it ahead to Lindbergh, and he bounces it out to center. Genovese has to be careful. The dangerous Michael Dal Cole is hovering. Dylan Strom saw a hit coming, made a pass, didn't clear it though. Carlisle sends it back down low to Lindbergh. He spins off a check. Now trying to circle, but Genovese not giving him an inch to work. Lindbergh goes barreling into the boards. Crowd doesn't like it, but no penalty coming. 
Alley passes in front of his own net. It's a wise play. The only man there was Nick Batts, and he'll lead things out for Erie by himself as they're on a change. Off the bench is McDavid. Connor McDavid's in. He's stopped by Appleby. Following up Marksman, McDavid short side, trying to shovel it in. Marksman pushes Appleby into his own net, and just like that, Connor McDavid can make things happen in a split second. It has been an eventful first period for Connor McDavid, his third scoring chance, but hasn't been able to convert yet. Behind the Oshawa bench with DJ Smith. Coach, I heard you say, get some pucks to the net. Do you want more action in front of William? Well, we need more shots. We passed up probably three good shots, and we're trying to make too many cute plays. We don't score like that. We got to get ugly. Is this the tempo you expected? Yeah, no, they're playing and they're desperate. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Sorelli, you're live. Well, we know Sorelli's lines up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting scenario because at times you got a big lead in the series. You know there's already three teams that have already punched their ticket. And human nature says you can't help but look ahead. Wow, this would be awesome. Win a title, go to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. But you still have to do the work on the ice. He probably wouldn't be thrilled with three scoring chances for McDavid in the first 10 minutes. But his team has kept him off the score sheet. Brent Peterson. He couldn't get away from Darren Radish. The Radish brothers they're from Caledon. Bouncing around at center. Who's coming up with this one? It's Peterson. Tried to loft it in deep, but big Curtis McDermott got up, knocked it down. Up ahead to Jake Marchman. Marchman has eight goals in this postseason. He only had 10 in the regular season. Pass in front to Kyle Maximovich, and he couldn't get a good shot away. He deked Van de Sample out on the reverse. He tapped the stick and ended up staying in the spot rather than chase. Puck ended up right on his stick. Just couldn't get it into a clean spot to foul Maximovich. McDavid back out there, working down the left wing side. Backing him down was Latour, but didn't take the puck. Dermott gets a shot. That was redirected point blank by Baptiste. Still stopped by Appleby. Hunter Smith, he controls along the boards with the much smaller Alex DeBrinket not making that an easy task. Now Baptiste, he's tied up. Puck comes to Josh Brown, the captain of the Generals. McDavid was right on his heels, but the big defenseman got the puck out of harm's way. Now the cat and mouse is unbelievable. McDavid's played on three different lines already in this game to try and get away from Paul Castles or Hunter Smith or Brad Latour. McDavid's out there, so is the Castles line, and Castles with eight points in this series. Got a shot, long range, easily handled by Williams. The tour fetches it in the corner, wraps it down low. Again, Hunter Smith is down there, and you can see the generals like to get the puck down there, so he can do some hard work along the boards. Castles trying to catch Erie on a change. He's been out there a while. Waited until Dow Cole was fresh off the bench. Now Castles, he's off to get a rest. Got a base. Head to Remielli. Takes a look around. First attempt, he couldn't get it out. Second attempt, gets to center. It's a two on one here for Erie. Betts. He shoots and scores. Nick Betts beats Ken Appleby. And the Otters lead. Well, the team that scored first has won every game so far in this series, so that's a good omen for Connor McDavid, Nick Betts, and the rest of the Erie Otters. And Betts does a great job here just looking off. Ellie's pass bounces off the skate. That creates the turn two on one. Strong goes to the net, but it's a quick look off and a shoulder turn by Betts. And then he goes to the low far side of the net to beat Appleby. Excellent play there, and it almost looked as if he was giving the impression he was going to go high, angling the blade upward. The puck stayed along the ice. And a 1-0 lead intact here for the Erie Otters. Nick Batch gets his sixth goal of this postseason, and he's scored some big ones along that road for Erie. Jake Marchman, Kyle Pettit, Taylor Radish. This has turned into an effective third line now that Kyle Pettit is back and healthy. Here we go. He returned in this series. He's missing a lot of time due to a hand injury. 
And its first game back was game three. That turned into a victory for the Erie Otters, their only win in this series. Archie, I want to take you back to the goal here as Nick Betts opens the scoring in this game five. And you'll see Ellie's pass. It bounces right off the skate of DeRoche. Now it's a two on one. Strom to the net. And it's a quick fake with the pass and then keeps the puck along the ice that allows Betts to beat Appleby. Good confidence gain there because we talk so often about Connor McDavid, but at some point the supporting cast has to help out. So again, another good sign here for Erie to start this game. Travis Dermott, he heads to center. And that goal by Nick Betts is brought down the noise level in the General Motors center a notch or two. Hunter Smith tries to get them back on their feet. A lose one check and scores! Hunter Smith is tied it! Well, both the defensemen for Erie, Patrick Murphy and Travis Dermott, had an opportunity to eliminate the man or the puck and on both occasions they missed on both attempts there's a good play there to get it by Murphy so Dermott comes over to cover up instead of trying to knock the puck out of the way tries to throw the big hit and when Smith sidesteps that he's got a big league shot he's able to bury it past Devin Williams and just as quickly as the crowd was taken out of it it's right back in it 34 scores 43 seconds after the Erie Otters took the lead. Here comes Ellie with a chance. And that stick broke in half. That's the way it's gone for Ellie in the playoffs. I mean, he's either missing the net, not taking the shot when he should, or blowing up the stick. Carlisle the other way. That's blocked. Got another chance. And Williams had to be quick to react to stop that one. Anthony Sorelli bumped off the puck by Genovese. Puck moved to an open side. Ellie tried to hurry for it, but Carlisle's first man there. Gone A. Gets over everybody's head. The Roche waits for it at center. Genovese, overage defenseman. His pass finds Michael Del Cole. That's not who he was looking for. Del Cole got a good hard shot away. Here's a three on two. Dylan Strom checked by Josh Brown, the captain of the Generals, with a big defensive play. And Latour made sure to get that puck in deep with McDermott trying to finish his check. Hunter Smith threw a hard hit on Darren Laddish. Connor McDavid, he's tracked down by Smith, but got it to Baptiste. He's stopped by Appleby, who got a good scoring chance after being set up by McDavid. Things have opened up here a little bit in the latter stages of the first period. Nick Betts started things out, but then 43 seconds later, Hunter Smith has tied it. The QMJHL final, President's Cup, Ramuski at home facing off against Quebec Series tied at two. Quebec on the power play from the point. Vladimir Katcha, that's Don Shannon's favorite player, over to Guillaume Gauthier. He feeds Adam Murney, the Tampa prospect, puts his 18th goal of the playoffs, has Louis-Philippe Guindon, 1-0 Ramparts. Sergeant? Jeff, that's been a funny series. Road teams have won every game so far, and the Ramparts have themselves on track to keep that streak intact. What a really first weird. period we've had here. 5.37 to go. Yuri Oshawa tied at one. And there's been plenty of scoring chances. And this is going to be a penalty to Cole Castles. He played the puck with his glove off the base on it. Well, that's uh, one area where Oshawa has been really good in the series. Coming into the game tonight is one of about 59% of the faceoffs. And we'll get another look at it. There's Castles, and you can see him just reach down there, and he's saying, well, my, my glove was attached to the stick. So, really, I wasn't using the glove, but essentially he wasn't using the free hand. He was still using the glove. He doesn't like the call, but it's not going to matter now. And the power play that in three games here has been one for nine gets a chance to make good on things here. It has been such a weapon for Erie in this postseason. A great opportunity to regain the lead. Well, you count to that, and you look at Oshawa's penalty kill throughout the course of the regular season, number one in the Ontario Hockey League, and have continued to do that well here in the postseason. 
Travis Durbin, he's the lone defenseman in this power play formation for Chris Knobloch. Connor McDavid, he gets knocked down, made a pass to Baptiste. Dermott's behind the net. Works in some tight traffic, got it to the line. Dermott able to keep it in. He shovels it across for Baptiste. Van de Schumper takes Baptiste into the boards, but McDavid gets it back to Dermott. Takes a look at the net, no clean shot, so Dylan Strom, he's got great vision. McDavid. Farsight, Strom fakes the shot, passes back, and Van de Sample read it perfectly and fires it the length of the ice. Williams trying to get this going quickly and catch Oshawa on a change and stand. He faced the puck. I appreciate the effort to try and do that from Williams, but previous to that, this puck doesn't even end up down there. Strom in a perfect opportunity to take a shot here. He gets the Defender, Mermis to bite on the fake, gets him down, and then elects to try and pass the puck across. And you can see it's just been that kind of start to this game for Dylan Strong. One minute gone off this power play. We'll continue to check the clock here. Nick Baptiste is over there, and I think it looks like the number two is being used by the officials if they add any time on, and they do indeed add two seconds onto the clock. Well, that's part of the job of the coaching staff, keep such an eye on that. Maybe more so as a visitor than you would the home team. Well, you know, people are so fired up here. When you see a power play icing, you get fired up, the crowd's going nuts. Pretty tough to hear that whistle. It is loud here at General Motors Center. Scrambled face off, had it, battles hard, lines up with a win. McCarron got a hit down low. Kyle Pettit quickly ahead to Alex Dabrinka. Trying to make a move around Brown, and Josh Brown plays him perfectly. Up bounces over Connor McDavid's stick. That will force the Otters to start again, and the crowd is into it. A couple of things that will ignite a crowd. A goal, no question, but big hits also have a very significant impact. The Brinkett pokes at it. A lot of red sweaters there. They can't get the puck. Pettit in front. Radish spins. Didn't get a shot. Puck's loose. And McDavid put it up high. Josh Brown moves it for safety. Over on the boards. Now it's cleared by Oshawa. That's about four grade A chances for Connor McDavid in this game. And he has yet to capitalize. That puck was just sitting there for the Otters. Dermott, final stages of this power play. Can't shoot for that spot. Lindbergh takes him to the corner, back on the ice is Cole Castles. He was waiting at center, hoping Latour could get him a pass. That didn't materialize. Well, really aggressive on the penalty kill, the Oshawa Generals, and it works again. Marchman throws a hit. Marchman gets the puck. Can he get a shot? Goes to the line. Betts, oh, all the traffic there. Three Oshawa Generals on him immediately. Kyle Maximovich, the rookie trying to find some room. It's Marchman again, passes in front. It was behind Maximovich, and Michael Del Cole takes over for the Generals with three minutes to go in the first. Del Cole, put it off the boards. He got it himself. Dermott, up ahead to Maximovich. Saw a hit from Sorelli coming. He spun away from that. Deroche surveys things up ahead, makes his way to center. Evan Williams leaves it behind the net for big defenseman Troy Donne, and Donne's pretty much perfected that flip backhand to get out of trouble. That's a difficult one. How many times do you see that one end up over the glass? Glass a little higher here than in Oshawa than it is in Erie, though. Williams out to leave it for Curtis McDermott. Hard pass to center. It's Dylan Strom waiting for it. Strom has Josh Brown in his face, and Brown wins another puck pass. Dermott takes it from Brown, and Brown throws his weight into Mason Marchment, separates him from the puck. Aiden Wallace just did get to center. Williams calmly moves it to his defenseman, Darren Raddick. Pass up ahead to Mason Marchment. Back in the lineup for the Erie Otters. He had been suspended 10 games for a hit on Mitch Marner when the Erie Otters were playing London. He and Kyle Pettit back in the lineup really adds a lot of depth to this forward group for here. Dylan Strom, he might get another chance. Sharp angle, short side attempt, but Ken Appleby had that side covered up. 
go back to the power play. Connor McDavid with a golden opportunity. His fourth such chance in this game, and the puck is sitting there on a platter for him. You'll see 97 left side of your screen. Puck ends up right on his stick, right here. And just off the mark. Barely off the mark, and I think this one ended up off the bar, too, the outside of the post. Puck cleared by the Generals off the faceoff, and they'll do the draw again from their own zone. Well, Alex Dabrinkit not afraid of anybody. You see him wrestle with Hunter Smith, and here he just gets pounded by Josh Smith. A little slow getting up, but this guy can take a beating, and you just watch him behind the play. Don't think he will forget about that quickly. He'll end up with a stick in the back of his legs with Josh Brown, and it'll come from number 12. Latour rips it around the boards. Good play at the line by Darren Radish. Kept it in. How about this side now? Curtis McDermott does his job. McDavid pokes at it. Got it to Dabrinkit. He was looking to go up high. Got it a little too high. And now Mermis has golfed this out of play. And it did deflect him. Break it with a golden opportunity as well. He shoots the puck hard for a little guy. This one ends up just over the net. And here's the brink it. I mean, just up over the net. And then Mermis flicks it up and it ends up into the bench. If you were keeping track of Chris Knobloch's line at the, lines at the start of the game, you can <laughs> throw that piece of paper out. Looks Another like Dale Hunter. <laughs> Very much so. A lot of mixing and matching. Now Baptiste is out there with Chatted and Betts. Radish. Makes a feed to Batch. He had his stick lifted. Wind up. Uh, shot on goal. Appleby. Now you see it. Now you don't. McDermott. Oh, he fired that hard low shot. But Appleby got a stick on it and knocked that out of play with 38.6 to go in the first. And he talked about Curtis McDermott. It was really a, a blessing for the Erie Otters because he was playing with Manchester uh, in the American Hockey League. And then they sent him back on October 9th. And uh, a guy that ended up going to King's camp way back when ends up signing with them. And he's turned out to be a huge piece in very much a Western Conference NHL type of defense. Dermott's pass. That's picked off by Mistel. Makes his way to the blue line. Took a shot, but Dermott stood his ground. Blocked it. Trying to send Dabrinkit the other way. Short pass to McDavid. He streaks through center. Dabrinkit gets it back. Big shot. Not much on it. It's loose. Appleby, he couldn't cover it up, and Strom couldn't bury it. McDavid was knocked down. You never know when you put the puck on net. Dermott sends it in deep. Marmis and McDavid bump for the puck. Radish can't keep it along the boards. The Brinkett took a swipe at it. How about Dermott? That shot's blocked by Smith and goes out of play right at the buzzer. Again, this McDavid line coming close. Yeah, and matched up this time with the other 200 point scorers in Strom and Debrinkin. But here, this puck looks like it's going to be covered up by Appleby. It ends up net side. Debrinkin gets a chance. Strom rather gets a chance. He can't make good on it, and we're back to where we started. Tied at one, but Erie out sharp. Oshawa 12 to 6 in that first period. A good effort from the road team, Jeff. Good period indeed. Uh, I'd have to think that if I'm Chris Knobloch, I like what I saw in the first period. Tied up at ones coming into the uh, second. Here's the first intermission alongside Damian Cox and John Shannon. Um, I want to talk about Ken Appleby, John, in a couple of seconds. But Damian, first, we saw it pretty much what, what, all Is there somebody on. more important on the ice? We're going to talk about the goaltender <laughs> in a moment. Stand down, soldier. Tomorrow's a big day for soccer fans. Say goodbye to a Liverpool legend. The Reds face Crystal Palace in an emotional farewell. The final home game at Anfield for longtime Liverpool captain Steven Gerrard, one of the greatest players in BPL history. That'll be at noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific on Sportsnet. Here's Rob Bones. RJ, thank you. Pleased to be joined by Dale DeGray. We've got a little story about how the OHL looks after one another, and the fans really jump in. Dale, tell us the story about Milan Dozy, who played for you from 2007 to 2010. Yeah, Milan was a he was a European import draft pick that we had, and came over and and uh, you know his his billet family actually took him in, and he wanted to come back and go to school. They took him in. Uh, he went to Brock University. Spent the summers with the Billet family, and you know, he had some came upon some hard luck, and 
and developed uh, a skin cancer and uh, he needed some help with uh, with some of his bills and stuff so we we tried to rally behind him and and the community and tried to uh, raise as much money as we could we uh, we, we started this uh, campaign an armband campaign or wristband campaign uh, do it for Dochi and uh, looking for proceeds of up to fifty thousand dollars and we're almost there uh, he's still at university, raised over 46000 You're still wearing the do it for Dozy. How's Milan doing right now? Right now, he's um, he's had a couple of treatments already, and uh, he's doing pretty well. I know he's got a summer intern course, I think, uh, with a business in Toronto. I think he's, he's a strong kid. He's a strong-minded, strong-willed kid. I know he's going to get through this. And, and you know what? It's been a lot of great support from the from you know Brock University and the locals in uh, in Owen Sound. Well, we'll make sure that everybody looks at Melandozy.com if you'd like to contribute. Again, the OHL taking care of its own. Dale the Great, thanks very much. Thank you. And but uh, it's been just a terrific story for Melandozy, and this has been a good story too. Oshawa and Erie, and with the call of the second period, here's R.J. Broadhead and Sam Cosentino. It has been a good series. When you break it down, Erie really could be 2-2 in this series. Maybe even they could be the team up three games to one. But the reality is Oshawa has a chance to move on to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Shot from holding, an early start for Oshawa. What a beginning to the second period. Sam Harding's a really talented player, but he's had a lot of trouble finding big minutes in this very deep Oshawa lineup. And so a good coaching move here by T.J. Smith. He gets him out there with McCarron right off the draw. And so Harding comes down the ice. McCarron gives it to him, and Harding buries it. He's able to kind of split the D there. A picture-perfect pass from McCarron, and Harding doesn't have it on the tape very long. Into the back of the net it goes. And a 2-1 lead for the home team. Well, that was quick. 26 seconds into the second period. Oshawa leads for the first time in this game. And two goals in the playoffs for Harding. Both have been in this series. Well, there's Harding all smiles on the bench. And you want to talk about a guy taking advantage of shooting percentages, taking advantage of limited minutes. Harding is that guy. Mentored by Scotty Lawton last year. Ended up playing with Team Ontario, second round pick out of the York Simcoe Express program. He's all smiles. Yuri has to answer. Their season's on the line. Generals are a tough team when they get a lead. Donne up ahead to Connor McDavid. He lets it go. Nick Betts was open for a moment, and then Hunter Smith made sure that opening was closed. Donne. Here is Remy Alley, the inside outside move. Mermis has lost his helmet. Puck comes outside the zone. Mermis can't play that puck. Didn't have a helmet, but still tapped his stick to try to decoy Dermott. Travis Dermott. Deking through center. He's into the Oshawa end. And his fan can though has to look to the line. That's the spot he usually occupies. Put him deep now, Alley. Trying to work down low. Castles keeping close to Remy Alley. Gets to the top of the circle, makes a pass to Dermott. There's a shot, but it's too high. Taylor Raddick in his rookie season in the OHL. He had 21 goals. Goes to the line. Dermott's everywhere right now. Now he's on the left point. Sends it in deep. Kyle Pettit retrieves it. Goes to the line. Donne looks at the net. Can't get it there. Bounces it off the end board. McDavid spins away. Gets in front. McDavid had to knock off his stick. All kinds of hacks and waxes. McDavid winds up in the corner. Oshawa on their heels, hemmed in, and they ice the puck. That is not icing. Well, you got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Deke me out. Thought maybe it was so loud, just didn't hear the whistle. Crowd was buzzing as the generals were defending. Jake Marchman. He can't get a shot through, maybe this time. Not worth it. Just went wide. Now Marchman's knocked down. Puck came in front. Nick Fane to Schumpel. Thought he might have some open ice. Al Maximovich stopped him. Dal Cole takes a hit from Curtis McDermott. And I believe the whistle has gone this time. And it's going to be a penalty. And McDermott is the one making his way to the box. 
Well, he's a marked man, McDermott, so every time he's out there, A, because of his size, B, because of how physically he plays, he becomes a marked man. But there's really no need for this whatsoever. I mean, Del Cole dumps that puck in, and now McDermott, there's the puck, it's gone, and now McDermott steps into him. You, you just put yourself in a bad spot by doing that. Del Cole goes down to the ice, maybe a little easily, but you go back to putting yourself in a spot in which a call can be made against you, and that's exactly what happened there to Curtis McDermott. Six power play goals in the series for the Generals. Mitch Van de Sump makes the shot, gets it over to Cole Cassis. He's staring at the net. Couldn't get it through. Lindbergh could try, and that's kicked away by the right pad of Williams. Now Cole comes up with a puck. He goes cross ice. Cassis, hard shot. That's stuck. Hits in on the doorstep. McCarran. No surprise who's in on this one. It's Cole Castles once again. And McCarron with that big body, not only does he create the screen here, but because he has that long reach, he doesn't have to move to track that rebound. All he has to do is reach out with the stick. He's on the backhand and knocks it in very quickly. There's Castles with a picture-perfect shot down to the pads, knows it'll create a rebound. He knows he's got a size advantage with McCarron in front of the net. Hey, why not just put it down there and see if the big guy can tap it home? And sure he did. Victor Poison on that Oshawa power play. McCarron Smith, whoever it is in front of the net, they provide a tremendous screen, and then they've got that great reach quickly in this second period. Two goals from the Generals, and the Eastern Conference's top team is up by two. Behind the Generals' net, Alex DeBrinca can't get far. Steven DeRoche clears it down the ice. This confirmed will be icing. Well, you know, RJ, you look at Oshawa, and in that first period, just had six shots. Uh, not the lowest that they've had in a playoff period so far this year, but very close to that. And so you go in to the dressing, you're saying, hey, guys, we didn't really play our best hockey through the first 20 minutes, yet we're still tied at one. We're now 40 minutes away from being where we were 20 minutes ago to punching our ticket to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And then they come out in the second period, get a couple of quick ones, and the building is right back engaged. And Oshawa playing with a ton of confidence. And you can see Erie now starting to press. Michael McCarron, first round pick of the Montreal Canadiens. Didn't even take him three minutes of that second period to turn this into a multi point game. Assisted on the Sam Harding goal, scored the 3 1 goal on the power play. And the taunts for Devin Williams begin from the crowd here at General Motors Center. Hard hit on Alley. Boy, the crowd likes the physical play here at Oshawa. They've seen enough of it this year. Dermott behind the net. Hunter Smith. He's banging around down there. So's Latour. Meantime, Mermis is holding the line. Huck is not got a play. And this is not got a play by an Otters player. I believe it's Dermott. It's going to be another power play for Oshawa. Was bitten there by his hand-eye coordination. And the puck's bouncing in the air, and really at about waist high, he knocks this thing right out. There's McDermott right there, number 40, and you can see him. He's just trying to knock it out of harm's way, but he got all blade on it. And by doing so, lifts it up over the glass. And scary time here for Erie. Off the faceoff, Al Cole got a hard shot. That's stopped by Williams. And Waters get to it and get it down the ice. Vandis Opel among the defenseman scoring leaders all season long. He'll hear his name called in June at the draft. McCaptees trying to get away shorthanded, and that's something the generals have to be wary of. Erie is dangerous when they're shorthanded. They can still come up with some offense. Six shorthanded goals here in the postseason. Tobias Lindbergh gets around one man, lofts it in on Williams. He takes it off the Otters logo and hangs on. You know, it's interesting, you, you look at all the depth this Oshawa Generals team possesses, and we talked about a guy like Lindbergh, who we saw at a brilliant performance in Sportsnet with a four-goal effort earlier this season. And up and down the lineup, there's scoring, there's toughness, there's size, there's physicality, there's vision, there's 200-foot players. A lot to like. Another clean face-off, Wendell Cole, couple of tries, side of the net, Mistily puts it in!
Mistily comes up big, and it all starts with a face-off win. That's something Oshawa's been really good at. Shot block, that doesn't seem to bother Del Toro. He gets another crack at him. The second shot produces a rebound. And there it is. Right on the doorstep is Mistily, and it goes between the legs of Devin Williams and in. And that's going to spell the end of the night for Devin Williams as Daniel DeConing comes in. DeConing, 18-year-old from Listowel, has only appeared once in this postseason. That came back in game four of the opening round series against the Sarnia Sting. In that game, Erie fell behind three to nothing. The Koning came in, was perfect, stopped 17 shots. And his team came back to win 4-3 in overtime and went on to win that opening round series in five games. Well, there's a couple of different elements here. First, you want to stem the tide. So by getting the goaltender change, yes, you can burn a little time and maybe take some of that momentum away. Number two, you want to send your team a message. And number three, it just hasn't been good enough for Williams so far in this game, maybe most important. Oshawa, two for two on the power play. They had five shots. Two of them the main camp. Taylor Rapp, cross ice, too far for Mason Mark. Carlisle in front of his own goal. A three-goal lead here for the Oshawa Generals. 14 and a half to go in the second period. Lots of time left in this game. Genovese having trouble with it. Got it over to Troy Donne, the two overage defensemen. Get it out to center, but no further than that. Genovese back to Donne. He's trying to get away from the one-man forecheck that's being applied by the Oshawa Generals. Donne is forced behind his net. Neutral zone clogged up. Generals have that luxury now that they have a three-goal lead. Cancels right on the back of McDavid, so that pass didn't convert. Ellie, he picked up a gear to cut to the middle. McBets had the puck for a moment, just couldn't control it to get a shot. And that's redirected back into the area. See, there's enough time, RJ, where you still have to balance how risk-taking you are in your approach here if you're here. I mean, if you really go all out and you really press and you're pinching the defenseman and this turns into a four-goal lead, you can say nighty-night. So you have to be still somewhat patient with this much amount of time left in the game. Hot pops loose down low. Lindbergh working against McDavid. Got it to Harding. And there's the first test for Daniel DeConing. And he's able to trap it against his body and hang on. What a second period it's been for the Oshawa Generals. Three goals, two of them on the power play, and that was a 4-1 lead. Behind the Erie bench with Chris Knobloch, down by three, he got bit by the power play a couple of times. What do you do now? Do you change maybe the way you force the, the play in their zone? What are the kind of things you want to do now? You still have lots of time. We do have lots of time. We've been in this situation before, but we do have to open it up a bit. Can you pressure in their zone, or is it a matter of carrying and trying to generate? Uh, they do a good job uh, with their gap and standing up at the blue line. Then we need to get pucks in below and then uh, use our points. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Interesting, RJ. Uh, during that break, Connor McDavid went down the bench to a man and kept saying, one shot at a time, guys. One shot at a time. We've heard it on Coach's Corner a lot. That three-goal lead is one of the worst in hockey. <laughs> I'd rather have it, though, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. <laughs> Sam Harding earning more ice time, wins a face-off, and Mike McCarron took a shot. It was wide of the goal. Curtis McDermott. Up ahead, Dylan Strong. Nothing to save it for now for Erie. They got to go all out. Baptiste a shot. That stopped by Appleby. Strong was on the doorstep. The rebound didn't come to him. Darren Radish. He's stripped of it by McCarron. Strom swiped at it, hit it with a high stick, and that will stop play. Now Dylan Strom with a six-point effort in the final game of the regular season to overtake Mitch Marner to win the OHL scoring championship. And now in the playoffs, hasn't produced to that same level. And it's interesting, though, all eyes on him now because everyone knows Connor McDavid's going to go first. He's the next highest-rated player in the game. And so scouts paying close attention to Dylan Strom. Van de Sample. From center ice, he gets sandwiched there between Maximovich and Marchman. General 
Eagles were offside on the play. Look at Daniel De Koning. I mean, uh, talk about a tough situation to be put in. He spent the 13-14 season with the Listowel Junior B Club. An eighth-round pick of the Erie Otters going back to the 2012 OHL priority selection. And then, as you mentioned, when he came into the game, it's been oh so long since he's seen the net. March 31st was the last time he's played in a game. He's one shot so far. Stop that. Shots this period are 8 to 2 in favor of Oshawa. They were outshot 12 6 in the opening period. You had a feeling that DJ Smith might have peeled some paint in that opening intermission. He couldn't have been too, too upset knowing that they were still at least tied, and it wasn't a good period for Oshawa, yet they still came out tied. Kelly trying to make his way through four generals. That did not work out. Hawk sent down the ice. It's iced by the generals. They'll take that to get the whistle. You know, he talked about the Conan getting in there. It's been a month and a half, March 31st. And, you know, Devin Williams is the guy that they've been riding throughout. And here, just before he got pulled, Troy Donne comes over to him and says, hey, pal, it's not your fault. We're going to try and get this thing done for you so you get another opportunity in game six. A quick handshake with the Koning, the two switch out. And we'll see what happens. Chris Knobloch has Dylan Strom taking the face off, and he's out there with Connor McDavid. Nick Baptiste has joined them. Baptiste, back to back, 30 plus goal seasons. He was acquired from Sudbury. He's a Buffalo pick. He's on the right wing side. At the moment, McDavid circles back, picks up some speed, tries to get to the outside. Hunter Smith got in front of him and forced McDavid to dump it in. Thomas wraps it over to Brown. They are the duo that's out there. Pretty much every time Connor McDavid is. Hunter Smith stops it in front of the net. The Conan took a swipe at it with his stick, but it's old Cassins who has it. Back to the line, Brown. He's okay just keeping this puck deep. That's for Cassins. Takes a hit from Murphy. Now Aiden Wallace comes up with it. Gets by Strom. Puck comes back to Strom. Now it's over on that right wing again. Wallace behind the net. Old Castles waiting there the whole time. Controlling. Comes up. Doesn't want to shoot. Goes to Brown. He doesn't want to shoot either. They're just controlling inside the area. So wasting a shift for McKeever. Not allowing him a chance to score. Wallace keeping it down low. And the crowd here at GM Center knows exactly what's happening. And they're applauding their generals for it. McDavid, tail end of a shift. Tried to bring it in over the line. Oh, hang on. It's not offside. It's too many men. And this is another penalty. They're going over to D.J. Smith, pointing and say too many men. And D.J. Smith just folds his arms on the bench saying, you know what, guys? We're up three goals here. We're almost through the midway point of this game. This is a situation we can ill afford to have happen to us. Five on the screen right there. And then a sixth enters the frame off the screen. And immediately the officials catch it, call it, and it's a power play. Almost a must for Erie to score on this power play. It's been so good for them in this postseason. McDermott takes a shot. That's redirected, but it missed the net. Aaron Radish puts it behind the net to Taylor Radish. This is not the number one unit out there for the Erie Otters. Of course, Strom and McDavid were out on that previous shift. They need a breather. Aaron Radish is pass to Pettit. Redirected, but wide of the net. Lots of control here for the Erie Otters. Can they get anything on goal? The Brinkett. We know he's got that scoring touch. McDermott let a high shot go. Paddock comes up with it. He goes to Darren Radish. It's McDermott again. Doesn't shoot this time. Here's Radish. That one's off the post. And it comes right back into the slot. Not out, though. Great chance for Radish to score, and he hit the post. Here he is again. Can he shoot? There it is. This time he finds the net. Power play goal for Erie. They're back in it. funny how that works RJ because you look at DJ Smith right after that penalty was taken and he knew something was up and so Radish hits the post play continues on and Erie doesn't panic Radish left side of your screen to break it looks at him gets him and Radish takes one step in to get around the stick and avoid the stick of Mervis and by doing so opens up the lane to get it past Appleby picture perfect shot 
to the long side where the bars meet one another. And all of a sudden, all this Oshawa crowd that was fired up and starting to buy their tickets for Quebec City have put the credit cards on hold. <laughs> Here he's back to within two, and you can actually hear music playing in the building now. <laughs> Little Elton John, not bad. Crowd is <laughs> quieted down that much. Still half a game to go. Lock sent to center. Interesting to look at the scoreboard. Finally, the two goes up on the Erie side. Play had gone on for 15 or 20 seconds before Erie got credited for credit 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 that power play goal from Darren Rass. Gets to the line, not out. Smith drops off for Latour. Shot low and wide. The Generals really haven't tested Daniel DeConing since he's come in. He's faced just two shots. Throw him to the middle. There's a difficult save for Appleby. Bets. Back behind the net is Strom. That stanchion in that corner has played havoc a couple of times. Hasn't cost anyone yet. We'll keep an eye on it. Maybe it will at some point in this game. Puck is iced by the Oshawa Generals. Daniel DeConing hasn't let any in. Darren Radish has scored, and it's game on. Time now for the CHL Roots alumni. And earlier this week, Connor McDavid was awarded the Red Tilson Trophy as the outstanding player in the Ontario Hockey League. And he's got a lot of honor buddies who've done it. Brad Boys did it two straight years. Connor Brown just one year ago. And this year, the other Connor McDavid. CHL Roots alumni is brought to you by Boston Pizza. Order from over 100 menu items at bostonpizza.com for delivery. McDavid, 120 points in the regular season. Missed all that time with a hand injury. Has 49 points in this postseason. That shot blocked by all the traffic there. Baptiste saw a loose puck and wanted to shoot quickly, but he was off the mark. McDavid, Josh Brown, right with him, Castles intercepts a pass. They didn't get it out. Dermott shot, stopped by Appleby. Puck sat there and cleared just in time by Castles. Gained a lot of confidence to Deary from scoring that goal. More offensive zone pressure, shooting the puck from everywhere. I think they sense maybe a little something in Appleby. Murphy looks spry on this shift. Hits to the front of the net. Baptiste with it. That's stopped by Appleby. Rebound goes in. The break it was going to the net. It looked like it went off him. And here he is within one. Well, good things happen when you go to the net. And the break it has it off the body and in. What a rush by Murphy. Like he was shot out of a cannon. And because Murphy takes it all the way down to the goal line, he drops and when that happens, shots taken and Debrinket follows it up. You see Debrinket right there. Is it off the glove? He celebrates. But they're going to have a look at this thing. And there's another look at it. You'll see Debrinket come in. And the puck had already bounced off him by the time you see that. And you see there was a good celebration, but it didn't look over exuberant in my books. There's no question they'll get a couple looks at this thing and, and see. But you talked about that momentum swing. You know, they get the goal of the power play with Radish, and we'll give you another look at it here. Here's the shot. It bounces up, and they're going to the net. And that's going to be really tough to determine whether it went off the shaft or it went off the glove. I think we have our answer. Not quite yet. A quick conversation between the two referees. What an important goal. And this decision, right side of your screen. Well, you know the puck's in, there's no doubt about that. And everybody looking on, waiting anxiously, because as you mentioned, RJ, I mean, you look at that swing here, Oshawa comes out, takes that three-goal lead, power play takes a bite out of that. 
And there's to break it right side of your screen. He comes into the play and maybe it looks there off his shoulder. And then maybe down off his elbow. That's, oh boy, that's a tough one to have to make a determination on. It's like he lifted it up. Both hands on the stick, lifted it up. The call on the ice is a goal, so you have to find definitive evidence to overturn it. And there have been a lot of different looks, and we've you know, continued to debate it up here. The facial expression debate, and it is close. Josh Brown and Ken Appleby complained immediately. It's always key in this situation to know what the call on the ice was, and obviously yes. it was a goal, and so now you're looking at someone that's something that is going to deem it not a goal. Like right there, looks off his shoulder, then bounces down either on the cuff of the glove or just off. It. The initial point of contact, you're right, looked up high near the shoulder. The question is, did it get redirected in by the glove after that? And that's what's difficult to determine. You know, if it goes in, there's going to be a huge argument about using those short cuff gloves <laughs> as opposed to the long cuff gloves because it was that close to the where the glove comes to an end. We're getting close to a three minute review here. See the shot bounce up, the bracket comes in. Oh man, that's, that one's pretty tough to tell. And then did Josh Brown even get any of it as he followed up on things after? There's Brown, he chops down, the puck's already on its way in. I, that's a tough one. Still reviewing it, and clearly such a turning point in the game, so it has to be the right call. That's the reason for the length of the Delay. No, that's it. Yeah, you have to take the time here and you have to make the right decision. There now we the go. phone is about to be hung up. That's what the crowd wanted to see. And it must have cut the glove after it got his shoulder. And maybe watch the trajectory of the puck. It hits the shoulder. And then it clearly hits something else because it goes in up high. Right side, off the shoulder, and then you have to think that with what they saw, it went off the cuff of the glove, the top part of the glove. There's no question he's trying to shovel it in or at least impact the direction of the puck. Frank it's on the bench, and he can't believe it. Yeah, he thought he had it. It was a long review in the trajectory of the puck when it bounced off the shoulder was on the way down, but yeah, it, it did hit to something go in else. up high yeah. when it entered the net. Determined it was off the glove, no goal, still a two goal lead for the Oshawa Generals. Momentum on the side of the Erie Otters, but that long delay, we'll see what effect that has. The effect on Daniel De Koning is he found out Matt Misterly can fire the puck. Oh, he sure can. Well, right after the disallowed goal, here he comes and gets the first shot on goal, and then they come back and give up a shot on goal. But Chris Knobloch, he never panics back there. And, you know, he talked about his team being light at dinner last night, uh, you know, doing their normal routine, playing the soccer and having a good time before the game. And that one definitely would have changed the complexion of this game. But you have to wonder how Erie responds now that that goal has been disallowed. They've been pressing since Oshawa took a 4-1 lead. Oshawa came out firing in this second period. Two quick goals in under three minutes. Scored three times in the period, two of them on the power play. Here he's answered with a power play goal. Misterly again. His pass in front of the net, the reach of Curtis McDermott gathered that in. The Roche. And it's pass off the boards. That doesn't find any general's teammates. McDermott at center. Kyle Pettit redirects it in. Jake Martin first to it. Pettit has it. Gets it in front of the net. Now McSinovich. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Might have had a long review on that one, too. It went wide, though. 
Now Cole, long shot in on DeConing, and that's really all the generals have generated on DeConing, those long shots, and he's been able to stop them. Yeah, well, if you can't get in close and you get a new goaltender, you have to do something to get the puck to the net. You want to test it. And so that's exactly what they're doing with, with those long shots. But backhanded out by Pettit in the air, it goes, oh, man. <laughs> That looks eerily similar to what happened on the other side of the net when it was this loud off the break it. And then Del Cole rips one off of the cone. Generals win another face off. Cole Castles looking for Hunter Smith. Dermot intercepts now. Nick Banks has to come out to help his defenseman. Got it to Connor McDavid. Some open ice for McDavid. And Cole Castles comes through with a good play. Betts bringing it inside the Oshawa zone. What of an offside. Marston was trying to get a change in. Three on two here for Oshawa. Redirected in front by Smith. Too high. Remy Elliott can't track that puck down. Josh Brown got there in a hurry. Fires it in. Hunter Smith blocks it. Dermott from the puck. Now cancels. He gets it. And moves it to Lindbergh. He circles behind the net. Tobias Lindbergh. Not looking to the front. Troy Donne finally tracks him down, but he got the pass to Cole Castles. It's Dermott taking care of Castles. They'll work hard along the board. Castles gets free. Couldn't get the puck to the net, though. Dylan Strom leads things out for the Erie Otters. Lobs it into the Oshawa end. Dakota Marmis gets in front of Strom. Shields him from the puck. Another clear for the Generals. Radish. Scored that big goal on the power play for Erie. That has them within two. Definitely within striking range with six minutes to go in the second period. Carlisle taking a few of those precious seconds off the clock. Baptiste watching Carlisle. The puck is slapped all the way down the ice for Ison. 5.51 to go in the second period. The Oshawa Generals leading by two. President's Cup final series tied at ones between the Ramouski Oceanic and the Quebec Ramparts. The game tied at ones here in the second period. Christopher Clapperton, the Florida prospect, nifty little pass over to Jan Kostel at the Jets prospect. Two to one, Ramouski. This one in the second. RJ? Thanks, Jeff. Jan Kostelik. He's drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. Those fans of the MasterCard Memorial Cup will like watching him play. You know, the Jets like watching him. A really good defenseman with Ramuski. And wouldn't that be something? They take another one. That would be three straight against the Quebec Ramparts. The Jets are going to have a lot to watch during the MasterCard Memorial Cup. They'll get a peek at Josh Morrissey as well. Another rising prospect on defense. For the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, he's not far away from cracking that lineup. Pass to center. Redwell by Mike McCarron. First round pick of the Montreal Canadiens. He's had a good period. Two points. Puck skated to center by Genovese. Baptiste tries to pick up some speed. Sees DeRoche right in front of him. Has to go wide. And so <laughs> Mike McCarron <laughs> was looking to eliminate Baptiste. Not only from the puck, maybe from the game, but Baptiste was wise to it. Better keep your head up. Gold trolley tracks around the net. Strom's pass. Gets it to Bats, but he couldn't get it to the net. DeRoche slides it ahead to Cole Castles. Wraps it around. Latour coming off the bench. will try to chase it over on the right wing side. Castles is over there now. He'll head to the corner with Remy Alley watching him close. The Canucks prospect. Sends it down to Latour. And this line can get a pretty good cycle going for Oshawa. Betts trying to chip it off the boards to himself. Dakota Mermis not fooled by that. Mermis has played in two straight MasterCard Memorial Cups, hoping to make it a third straight. Previous two were with the London Knights. It's worked out pretty well for him since transferring out of the University of Denver. At it. Over to Radish. He couldn't get a good shot. Through. Radish finds McDavid. Mermis trying to stay with him. Finally knocks McDavid down. And McDavid's frustrated. Oshawa Generals are offside as they come over the line. 
Bassels and McDavid were having some words. McDavid made his way to the bench. Well, there's five guys that uh, B.J. Smith wants out there. Cole Castles, Dakota Murmurs, Josh Brown. And look at this battle. Murmurs just takes McDavid to the ice. He gets a whack at him, and then Castles takes a whack. And so McDavid showing signs of frustration as he goes right back after Castle. Four really good scoring chances in the first period. Did McDavid did not cash on any of them, and space has been a little tougher to come by here in the second period. Genovese circling his own net. Here he doesn't want to waste much time. Puck comes to center. Marchman eliminates Carlisle, but he did what he wanted to do. Get the puck into the area zone. Out at center. Carlisle and Marchman battle for it again. Del four. Chips it off the boards, but Don A reached it. Sends it into the Oshawa end. Some skating room for Carlisle. He glides to center. Just did get there. DeConing comes out to play. Troy Don A. Lots of time with Oshawa on a change. Now he looks up to center. There's Baptiste. Strom up ahead. Baptiste takes the shot. Winds up going off a stick and out of play. We are very close to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. It's a week away, and it will be the Kelowna Rockets, the WHL champs, against the Quebec Ramparts. They're the host team. But they still have a chance to be the QMJHL champions. So next Friday, the MasterCard Memorial Cup gets underway. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Sportsnet East Ontario, West and Pacific. Oshawa, if they win tonight, they will be taking part in that tremendous tournament. Erie still hoping to get there. They've got some work to do here in Game 5. The Roche, there's a shot. Redirected out of play just in time by De Koning because Lindbergh had his stick right there looking for a redirect into the open net. Really good read there by De Koning. Get out to the top of his crease and intercept that pass slash shot. Does a good job here. And Lindbergh waiting there. You know he can put the puck in the back of the net. Roche with the shot has had an excellent postseason. Really starting to heat up a lot of minutes with Will Petschnik out of the lineup. Just under three minutes to go in the second period. Pettit wins the face off. Gratis the safe play off the glass. Gets it out. Not enough for icing. And that'll force the Roche to hurry. Because Jake Markman's right there on the fourth deck. Bombley got it ahead to Lindbergh. Aiden Wallace had to take that pass in his skates. Still got it into the area end. And now Lindbergh closing quickly on Radish. Travis Dermott. Must be good at geometry. Played that angle well. Teams just dumping it in now. Oshawa content to keep it in the area end as long as possible. Protect this two goal lead. Wrap up this series and plan a trip to Quebec City. Hunter Smith, he'll get this puck out. Took a hit from Dermott. Got the job done to Koning to play it again. That's read by Castles. Doubles it in front. He knew Smith was in that vicinity, but Travis Dermott took it away. Smith wants a time now. He's been out there a while. Lightly sends it into the Erie zone. Murphy having trouble getting it by Castle. The second effort gets it done. But now Dermott has to deal with Mistel. Springs away a second time. Puck knocked off his stick. There to help out McDavid. Taylor Radish. Passes in front, but Remielli couldn't retreat it. David bumps with McCarron. Puck cleared again by the Generals. Murphy has to be careful with the dangerous Michael Dalcole. Looking for a loose puck. Lofted over to Taylor Radish. That's out of his reach. Mermis heads back after it. Radish bumps with him, but Mermis content to keep the puck in his skates along the boards. No room to work there for the audience. Let's go to play in the Mermis up ahead to DeRoche. Another safe exit for the Oshawa Generals. The voting out to play it, not being pressured. McDermott forced to circle back. Fresh legs on the way for Oshawa. Nick Baptiste. He got to center. Puck bouncing around. It's the Generals with it again, and Lindbergh lightly sends it into the area. end. This is how you protect the two-goal lead. It's written in the textbook. We're seeing it executed right now by the Generals. Easy in, easy out. Castles 
Two otters on him, still gets a pass back. That's out of the reach of DeRoche. Carlisle heading back. He'll take it from his goalie, Dylan Strom. Optimistic he might get a loose puck. That didn't happen. Out again for the Generals. Maybe a scoring chance. Lindbergh working one on one against Genovese. The overage defenseman knocked it to the corner. Darren Radish behind his own net, wraps it around. That'll do it for the second period. A good period for Oshawa. Yeah, it sure was. Able to really extend the lead here. They got the benefit of a overturned goal call and now just 20 minutes away from a trip to Quebec City. Generals with a two goal lead. Can Connor McDavid and the Erie Otters have some magic for the third? Can't wait to find out, Jeff. Yeah, you've uh, you wonder, RJ, if uh, Connor McDavid has gone into a phone booth, not the dressing room, to put on his cape and mask and come up for the third period and salvage the Erie Otters season down four to six different goal scorers. Damian Cox, John Shannon, along with us. And when you see the Oshawa general score, the Blue Jays are in action tomorrow against Colby Rasmus and his new team, the Houston Astros, 6:30 Eastern Time, 3:30 Pacific, on Sportsnet. Rob Fultz is standing by the Oshawa bench. Rob. With Dakota Mermis. Dakota, can you guys afford to go into full lockdown mode against a team like Erie in the final 20? No, absolutely not. We're going to continue to play the same way. Something we talked about in the room. We're going to keep pushing, keep pushing, trying to score more goals. Situation like this, you've been through this. What kind of advice have you been able to give your team? You know what? Stick with it. There's going to be a lot of highs, a lot of momentum shifts, and uh, it's all going to be about who can hold the momentum the longest. Thanks very much. Thank you. Dakota also said to me, I love playing hockey in May. With the call of the third period is R.J. Brada and Sam Cosentino. That's all he knows. Yeah, sure he does. A couple of runs with the London Knights and now with the Oshawa Generals. There's Connor McDavid. Such a terrific junior hockey career. He's got a period to extend it. Team down by two, facing elimination tonight in Oshawa. The Generals have been so good on home ice being able to shut down this high-powered Erie Otters attack. They've got one more period to do it. And then they will be playing in the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Latour clears to center. Aaron Radish, cross ice, Dermott. Tried to slap it in. Looked like he was making an effort to put it right on goal, but it hit a body, didn't get there. Connor McDavid is on the ice. Pass gets to him. Trying to go wide. Bandit Sample stays with him. And McDavid, he's not fooling around. Wasn't looking to pass. Took a hard shot that was stopped by Ken Appleby. Well, he's going to have to wear him out here as Chris Knobloch in this third period to try and get Neary back into this game. But when you look at the Oshawa Generals and combine the regular season, the playoffs, 49 wins against two losses when leading after two periods of play. So a monumental task ahead for the Erie Otters to try and come back and tie and possibly win this thing. Baptiste switched spots with McDermott but couldn't keep the puck in. Josh Brown stayed with Baptiste the whole way, sent it down the ice, and it's icing against Oshawa. Here again's Rob. RJ Sam, the, the emotion on the team right now, you take a look at the Erie Otters. They look very calm. But in that second period, when all of a sudden it appeared Oshawa was on a huge roll, Nick Betts came charging off the bench, went down the hallway into the corridor, and let fly. Just basically a primal scream, like, let's get it going. Back to the bench, said to the guys, we're not done yet. It worked. Erie's battled back. Got a power play goal to make it four to two. And then moments after that, Alex Debrink had put the puck in the net. There was a lengthy review that was right around four minutes. It was ruled. He directed the puck into the net with a glove. It remains 4-2. Will that be the turning point in this one? Stephen DeRoche gets it just outside the line. Gary will have to reset. Here they come. Dylan Strom. We'll see lots of him in this third period. Cole Castles trying to make things difficult. Look at all the red sweaters back there to greet Sloan. Here comes Oshawa. Latour's shots off the stick, and it remains Daniel DeConing in net for the Uri Otters. Well, one thing Oshawa will really do is still continue to protect that blue line. I mean, they don't want to allow Uri easy uh, entrances into the zone. And so how that works is 
you look at your forward group coming back and back pressuring, and you're looking at a big physical group standing at the line. And those two things combined tend to squish that neutral zone down and make it very difficult for Erie to get into Oshawa's end. No doubt the Otters have their work cut out for them, trying to score two just to tie in this period. But they do have a terrific offense. And if there's a team that can do it, Erie's the team. Thomas, pass ahead, another safe exit. McDermott quickly ahead. Marksman can't stick handle through traffic. Generals get it back out to the neutral zone. They don't mind having the puck out there. There's only one zone they don't want it to be in. Anthony Sorelli closes on Dermott. Can't keep the puck along the boards. Behind the net, Murphy wraps it around. Brown gets over in plenty of time to keep it in. Rips it the other way. There's Lindbergh now. Over to Castles. Got a stick on it. Couldn't control. Oshawa takes their time. Dakota Mermis leads the Oshawa Generals defenseman in scoring in this postseason. He's just been doing everything to the Oshawa Generals. And you look back to that acquisition by Roger Hunt. Maybe got overlooked a little bit. And right now, it's turned out to be just a tremendous trade for Oshawa. Well, he defends well. He's nasty to play against. And now he's showing a side that we didn't really see in London with being able to add offense to his game. That puck is deflected out of play. Face off will come into the area end. Well, Oshawa and DJ Smith, the very intent on really protecting their own goal. Watch this example. Three guys down below the line, and now five guys down below the dots there to defend against the Erie Otters. So that's what Erie is going to be facing here the rest of this game. I mean, DJ Smith really made his mark looking after the defense for those really good Windsor teams in 09 and 2010. And so that's his uh, specialty, no question. And his general's players have taken pride in it. There's no question. They were thrilled with how they shut down Connor McDavid in games one and two. They got a period to do it. There's Strom with a shot. Appleby got a piece of it. Dal Cole makes that puck come loose. And here's McCarron with Matt Misterly along with him. Misterly has five goals in this series, including one tonight. He and Cole Cass is a two-man wrecking crew for Ottawa. Misterly slaps it back into the area. end. Baptiste in skating room to the center. And then all of a sudden, the generals conglomerate on him as he gets inside their line. And the puck just... Lightly rolls to Appleby and he hangs on. Well, RJ, here we are in game five, and uh, Cole Castles has just been brilliant. I mean, not only has he defended well against Connor McDavid, but he's scored four goals, 11 points, four multi point games in the five. He's got three points in this one. After being banged up early, he's responded quite well, thank you very much. And I said it off the top of the show, and I really believe it that. Vancouver has got a pro player, a guy who's going to play in the National Hockey League and a steal for a third round pick. Wouldn't have much argument from anyone in the Generals organization, and maybe the Otters organization would agree to that too, the way he's been able to play a defensive role on Connor McDavid and yet produce 11 points to lead all players in this series. He's one of those guys you look down and, and you watch him play, and over time you say, that guy's a pro. And that's exactly what he is. Well, he's got the genes, we know that. Maximovich, a little impatient, couldn't wait long enough. Entered the zone, had it was still onside. Kyle Maximovich is a guy who's really uh, shown up here in the playoffs. A, a smaller player, but a guy who had great success playing in his minor hockey days. And you could see a lot of good things coming out of this guy that whatever happens, Maximovich will be a big part of this theory team moving forward into the next season. Played just over four minutes of the third period. DJ Smith trying to direct everybody where they need to be, who they need to keep an eye on. Marchman takes the face off, goes to the bench. Betts replaces him. McDavid is out there. Latour. Old man in on the four check. Hits it over to Cassis. Latour working down low against Dermott. McDavid's there to help out. Up to Betts. 
Back to David. He pokes it past one man. Over to Alley. Pass to Vance. He wants right in. Appleby. Huge save. Puck was loose. And Hunter Smith was back there to clear it out of the crease. Oh, what a rush by Connor McDavid. And the Otters came close. Appleby has been so good for Oshawa this season. You see him with the brick painted on the front of his mask, and it doesn't take much for McDavid to get going. And now, even with everyone back, it still turns into an odd man situation. As everyone collapses down low, it's the trailer you got to watch. That's perfect opportunity to take it to the net, go to the back end. Appleby follows them, and then because all the red jerseys were back, they were easily able to get a stoppage. Another face-off win. Pettit wins this one. McDavid's still out there. We'll see a lot of Pettit and Marchment on the face-offs now for the Erie Otters. Yeah, Pettit took that one, and right to the bench he goes. And Dylan Strom replaces him as McDavid makes his way through center ice. Gets it to Strom. Return feed is off escape, but McDavid got it in the corner. Three generals near him. That opens things up for Strom, who tries to tuck it in front. But Appleby got the stick in the way of that and stops playing. Sometimes a different perspective will tell you just how much this really is a game of inches. And you look at that last rush with the Betts backhand ending up behind Appleby, getting a little help from Smith and Brown down there. Total team effort. That's what championship teams need. Strome taking this face off, and it's a win for Wallace. Not out, though. Alex Dabrinkin, centering attempt. Not much room to work for the Otters. There was no space, and Lindbergh gets the center. Sorelli striking down the left wing side. Crunch guard by McDermott, who finished his check. Carlisle wants to keep it in. Gets it down low. Lindbergh takes a hard hit back there from McDermott. The brink of cross ice. There's Strom. 129 points this season. They need some points from him in the third. Double out to center, Lindbergh. Puck rolling away from him, couldn't control. Wallace slaps it back in. Change time for the Generals. Travis Dermott slowly in front of his own net. Old Castle skates by. Dermott looking cross ice. Passes behind Murphy. He redirected it into the Oshawa end. Mermis, fully aware it was a delayed offside, took his time before he made a pass all the way into the Erie end. The tour shot wide. Castles a chance, and that was stopped by DeConing. The tour. Over to an open corner. Hunter Smith bumps with Dermott. Passes behind Mason Mark. Rounds there. He sends it right back in. 13 and a half minutes to go. Erie needs two to top. McDavid's back out there. We'll see a lot of 97. We pass into the skates of Marshall. Able to get it to his stick and dump it in just in time as McDavid was sprinting to get up to that Oshawa hand. Nick Betts comes out of the corner. Betts to the line. Can't shoot. Dermott got open. There's a shot, but that's wide of the net. Takes a bounce off the stanchion. Bouncing around. Gets to Marchman. That's deflected just wide. Al Cole off the top of the glass. Dermott holds the line for a moment. Mistily gets to it, and he ices it. Oshawa needed that whistle. They're defending right now, protecting that two-goal lead with just under 13 minutes to go. Back to the second period we go. Uh, Alex Debrinkin. You see him on the right side of your screen, dishes it up, then goes to the front of the net. Now this puck ends up in the back of the net and celebrates, but it was a goal that was deemed to be redirected by the glove and into the net. So what was called a goal was originally overturned. The reaction shows Oshawa is almost as if they scored and Debrinkit not believing that the call was overturned. And no doubt that's been a key moment in this game. That would have brought Erie to within one. The momentum would have been in their favor instead. Things ground to a halt for Erie. Latour takes a shot that's stopped by DeConing. Keep in mind, Daniel DeConing has replaced Devin Williams. Williams was pulled in that second period. He allowed four goals on 13 shots. DeConing hasn't been tested, but he's been perfect so far. Smith can't weave his way past Patrick Murphy. 
Here's Connor McDavid. Look at the room he's got. He can make something happen. Trying to go wide on Mermis. Got it to the net. Appleby was down. He was covering everything low. Iced again by the Generals. We'll see lots of that. OHL teams can change on icing, so it is a set play when you need a break and relieve some pressure. Here's McDavid takes it in his own zone. He's got that great speed. He's head up. He's trying to recognize where the pass option might be available. It wasn't, so he took it to net himself. Got a second whack at it, but Appleby tight to that left post. Wasn't giving away any room whatsoever. 45 second shift and you can see McDavid very attentive to the clock. Time is beginning to be the enemy of the Otters. Plenty of it though to get to. 12 minutes remains. Michael Dalcourt moves it near that eerie line. Here's Dylan Strong. Down the middle of the ice. Saucers it nicely to Baptiste but it wouldn't settle for him. Now to Brinkett. He tried to fire that was off the stick of Van de Stompel and went out of play. Alex Debrinket with an amazing rookie season was actually found by accident. Cherry Bass, the general manager up in Sault Ste. Marie, to get a look at a couple of his prospects. And during a tournament, he noticed Debrinket. And then he went back and watched Debrinket again. And then another time and said, wow, who is this guy? And decided that once he wasn't drafted in the Ontario Hockey League draft, he'd approach him to sign a, an OHL agreement. He did so. And, the Otters were happy. Debrinket's really happy, and it's worked out well for everybody. Turned into the OHL Rookie of the Year. Tough to beat 51 goals and 104 points. Three players on the Otters had over 100 points. Debrinket, Strom, and McDavid. They need to produce now. Dermott in the corner. Oshawa continuing to do a great job. Lindbergh a chance, banging the right side of the net. Wallace couldn't get it to go. And De Koning shuts the door on the Generals. There haven't been a ton of chances because Erie is, or Oshawa rather, is pretty much playing the prevent. And so the odd chance they get, it's De Koning who hasn't seen a lot of action. In fact, you go back to March 31st, as you talked about, has to get in to face this situation with Oshawa Generals sniffing blood, trying to get it by him to increase that lead and put this thing away. And good on De Koning for the way he's reacted so far. Last time he came in, his team was down by three, and they came back to win in overtime. He entered this game with his Erie Otters down by three. They've got one since he's entered the game. McDermott looking up ice. Who's open? It's Nick Bats. Now it's into the Oshawa zone. Appleby stops it there. Pettit racing with Josh Brown. Now Brown sees some trouble trying to keep it along the boards. He's knocked down. A low shake. Can't tie up Maximovich. Comes back to Donne. McDermott takes a shot. That's off a leg. It goes wide. And here's Michael Dalcourt. His cross ice pass. Knocked out of the air by Betts. Nick Betts started things off. He opened the scoring in this game. It looked like Erie might be on track to force a game six. Oshawa has come back to have a Huge second period where they scored three goals, two of them on the power play. Hasn't been any scoring here in the third. Oshawa's okay with that if it remains the same. Here he needs goals. Dermott trying to generate something. Leaves it for Remy Alley. Alley couldn't get a shot through. Carlisle bumps with Alley. Alley bumps back. Now there's a pass in front. Nobody there for Erie. Comes back to Dermott. He goes cross ice. Patrick Murphy. He's waiting, waiting. Did he wait too long? No, he got it back to Dermott. Now down low. McDavid's knocked down. Gets the puck. Got a shot. That was stopped by Appleby. He is so tricky in a quick release. Smith hits with Murphy down low. Four Otters went to that corner to get the puck. They did get it. Now his pass was off his skate. Dermott edge behind his own net. Lindbergh circling in front. McDavid comes to get that puck. He's going to skate by a couple of generals. Makes a pass to Marchman. That shot's wide of the net. And it will come all the way out to center. McDermott right back in. Hermes can't get it out. Take Marchman. He's poke checked by Mermis this time. Dakota Mermis puts it up high above everybody down the ice. 
And it's icing again. Nine minutes, five seconds remains. Connor McDavid will rest in this commercial break. We'll see him soon. Captain Connor McDavid of the Erie Otters. Could this potentially be his final Ontario Hockey League game? Well, if it is, it's been quite a career here. Accepted into the OHL as an exceptional player. Granted by Hockey Canada, the first overall pick in 2012 as a result of being granted that status. Next year, the Rookie of the Year. Last year, most sportsmen like and the Scholastic Player of the Year. This year, he wins the Red Cross as the OHL Player of the Year. And the points he has put up is simply amazing. And let's not forget, still two points shy of an OHL playoff record, 51 held by two others. Still nope. has an opportunity to do it with a half period left. No points yet tonight. Oshawa just the second team all season to hold Connor McDavid off the score sheet. Niagara was able to do it twice. In game two, Oshawa did it. You look at Jason Daw going back to 1993. Justin Papineau with the Belleville Bulls in 1993, each with 51 points. Connor McDavid sits two behind both of those players. Face off win. McDermott takes a shot. Stopped by Appleby. There's a rebound. Generals got to it. Clear it out to center. That's as far as they get. Castles follows up. Got it to Latour, and he gets it deep in the Erie zone. Games one and two. For the first time all season long, Erie lost back-to-back -back games with Connor McDavid in their lineup. Such a dominant player. Castles. He's been dominant in this series. Let's not just leave it to the series. It's been longer than that. McDavid trying to go wide. Josh Brown played him fairly well. Made a centering pass. Nobody was there for Erie. Now down Cole has to hurry. McDavid's catching up on the back check. McDavid's all over the ice so fast. Has it behind his net now. Mermis comes over. That's blocked by McDavid. And fortunately for Mermis and the Generals, he took a hop across ice. David got his pound of flesh on John Brown. <laughs> Crowd cheering their generals on. Under eight minutes to go. Kyle Maximovic didn't get a shot. Mr. Lee comes in, clears again. Aptis building the front of his net as Lindbergh was trying to get a scoring chance. Thurman up ahead to Ellie. Now's the time where Erie's got to take some chances. Appleby, clean pass to DeRoche. Up ahead, Sorelli got to center. Pass picked off by Wallace. Gets it down the ice. Curtis McDermott has to deal with Sorelli, who's wreaking some havoc for Erie. Yeah, really good speed, Sorelli, here in his rookie year. Stayed an extra year in minor hockey, playing midget last year, and signed as a free agent by Roger Hunt. It was funny to watch him before the game. The youngest guy, the rookie of the team, he had to pick up all the pucks. <laughs> by himself. A veteran team, the Oshawa Generals, spent a good portion of this season as the number one ranked team in the CHL. We're seeing why in this series throughout the playoffs. North Bay was able to force six games against the Oshawa Generals, but that's his deep as anyone took them in a playoff series. Here he still has some time to force a sixth game. But it's ticking away quickly on him. And another icing against Oshawa. Well, you have to go back to 2006, the last time an Eastern Conference team won the Ontario Hockey League Championship. That was the Peterborough Beats sweeping out the London Knights that year before making an appearance in the MasterCard Memorial Cup in Moncton. Since then, it's been a Western Conference run. And, you know, you go back to earlier this year, Jeff Merrick and I did the junior podcast, and one of the things he mentioned was, hey, let's give the Eastern Conference some credit here in the Ontario Hockey League this year. When you look at teams like Niagara, Ottawa had a wonderful finish, North Bay always good, and the Oshawa Generals, the top of the pile in the Eastern Conference, improving it here now in the playoffs. 
McDavid to Brink at Strom. There is the trio now. Well over three and a point combined. They're getting chances. Strom couldn't beat Appleby. Oh, they're coming close. But Appleby is keeping the puck out. The Brinkett. And find McDavid. Now Cole gets to center. He was desperate to get it into the area and to get a change. Thurman skating well as he comes into the Oshawa end. There's a long shot and Ken Appleby. He's cool in there. Makes a glove save. And the Otters crash the net. McDavid's in the middle of it again. He and Josh Brown having words. What a battle they've had in this series. And Ken Appleby trying to stay focused. He's done the job so far. Five and a half remains. The Oshawa Generals, the most storied franchise in terms of OHL championships in the Ontario Hockey League with 12 looking to make it 13. MasterCard Memorial Cup champs in 1990. The game two win was uh, also a win in which the Oshawa General celebrated the 25th anniversary. DJ Smith's 38th birthday. A few banners hanging in the rafters here at the GM Center. View from a long time ago and then the 1990 championship. Oshawa getting closer. Time still not comfortable for them. Here's a breakaway for Latour. He scores! Good chip pass by Hunter Smith to Spring Latour. It comes off the draw. This is a picture perfect pass. And Latour was making no mistake whatsoever. Here's Brown. He'll go up the boards. Smith takes it, and it's a simple chip into the middle of the ice. Excellent execution on the part of the Oshawa Generals. The A and the draw B transition that into a breakaway goal for Bradley Latour. And you know, RJ, you talk about Cole Castles, you talk about Hunter Smith, the size second round pick, but the guy who really has gone unsung on that line has been Bradley Latour. So full marks for Brad Latour, fourth round pick of the Oshawa Generals in 2011. When you talk to DJ Smith and trying to institute culture into this Oshawa franchise, he points to Brad Latour. Lead pass, it's McDavid on a breakaway. Latour had him on their feet with the goal, but listen to this. Backhand glove save. Listen to this joint. They're bowing, they're cheering, they got his name going. Out and fired off. Teams exchange breakaways. And it's Oshawa that adds one on the scoreboard. In front of the Oshawa net. Hermes up the boards. Right into that eerie end. Huge goal for Bradley Latour. Connor McDavid could not answer back for the odds. Paul Cassis. He comes up with a puck. Had to spin away from a hit. Del Bowl lobs it down low. The Koning leaves it for his defenseman, Curtis McDermott. Pass to McDavid. Had to take it in his skates. Here once again by Mermis. That'll be right on goal. McDermott, overage defenseman, picked off by Del Cole. He comes in, stopped by De Koning. The rookie goalie is making some saves, trying to keep his team in it. Dylan Strom cuts to the middle. That's stopped by Appleby. Aloche's on the rebound and takes it to the corner. RJ, you said it best, introducing Appleby into the game after a game in which he's given up five goals. He has responded well. Shot 
from Dermott. That was a sharp angle. How about to break it? That's off the crossbar. Oh, he came close. Appleby stopping punts and getting some luck, too. And that puck's near the Erie bench. They're trying to get a change in. They were cautious, made sure not to touch it. There's McDavid. Another chance. Off the stick of Carlisle and went wide. McDavid knocks his man down. Now he's trying to find that puck, searching for it in the scrum along the boards. Murphy, did he keep it in? No, he did not. Castles out to center. Deeks around Radish. Maximovich steps in front of him. Nick Baptiste gets around Josh Brown. No room to shoot from there, and Brown's back in position. Gets the puck back. That's off a Erie player down the ice. Not enough for icing. Under three minutes to go now. And Erie's down by three. Mason Marchman. He's the son of Brian Marchman. Well, he was feeling it on that surge, but too many generals back there. Couldn't get around them all. You have to start to think about getting to Koning now if you're Chris Knobloch. I mean, down three. Carlisle is down. Yeah, I think Marchment, he just hammered him into the boards. Marchment number 11 as Carlisle was off balance as he played that puck he was facing Marchman. Marchman finished his check and unfortunately for Carlisle he was off balance when when taking the hit. There had been a little elbow mixed in there too. Paul did mention he is Brian Marchman's son. <laughs> Might be some tricks of the trade passed down. It's funny those things don't hurt as much when you're up 5 2 and you're 2 minutes and 37 seconds away from punching your ticket. Incidentally there was no penalty on the play the whistle went because the puck went out of play and this gives Chris Knobloch an opportunity to call his time out get the coning to the bench extra attacker out there and what's the play you draw up for three. You can't get three until you get the first one, and that's the opportunity they have an offensive zone face off here. DJ Smith saying, hey guys, just play everyone on the right side of the puck here. Remain calm. And if you have to ice the puck, no problem. So with 237 left, this might resemble the likes of the end of an NBA game. Where you see it go on and on and the whistles and the fouls and so on and so forth because Oshawa does have the opportunity to ice the puck with no penalty. Here he's got their firepower on the ice. McDavid, Strom, DeBrinken, Nick Baptiste. He had 32 goals this season. That hit somebody in the Oshawa bench. And Oshawa trying to say that, no, no, I was off the boards. <laughs> They're not winning that battle. Well, they'll have to try things again, but you look at all that firepower out there. And you look at the way Oshawa has defended all season long. This is going to be extremely difficult for here. The Brinkett 51 goals, Strom 45 goals, McDavid 44 goals, Baptiste 32 goals. They need them now. Lee pass to DeBrinket. Doesn't connect. Mermis and Brown. Boy, there are two pillars back there. Can't generate much with them. Nets empty. Extra attacker. Here's DeBrinket starting up. Hard work to get to center. Now he hands off to Strong. Trying to go wide on Brown, who uses that fantastic reach. Slaps it down the ice. It's wide of the net. And it's icing. The big tournament starts in a week, the MasterCard Memorial Cup. We know 75% of the teams for sure, alone are the WHL champs, will take on the Quebec Ramparts. That will kick things off Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. The winner of the OHL will take on Ramuski on Saturday afternoon in game two. And the Oshawa Generals are two minutes away from penciling their name into that slot to play on Saturday.
They have to defend now. The full court press is on from the Erie Otters. Remielli throws a hit, gets the puck. McDavid stick handling in tight quarters. Dermott over the open side. Murphy not shooting. Can't get it by Castles. A big shot block. And a slashing call. It was Mermis looking skyward as he saw the signal from the referee, and it's Mermis going to the penalty box. He and Ellie have battled all series long. And Ellie, right after the faceoff win, he goes back deep into the Oshawa corner, and Ellie laid some kind of lick on him. It jarred his helmet, and you could tell Mermis was ticked off. He was just looking for anyone to make contact with to show his frustration. Minute 42 to go. Six on four on the ice, even though Oshawa's got five out there right now. Castles will come off. Erie has scored a power play goal tonight. One for two with a man advantage. Kelly takes the shot. That is blocked by Vandersoff. That stung. Now Oshawa's essentially down to three and a half players. Vandersoff will try to hang in there. Quick pass in front. Didn't get that. Now to the line. Dermott looks at the net. Can't shoot. Now he does. That's redirected wide. Vandersoff, well, he was willing to block another one. Carlisle along the boards. That didn't get out. McCarron. He contains, goes to an open side, fired it, that even hit Van de Sample. Ellie, shot from Dermott, that's blocked, the break and a chance, and Appleby gets over in time to make another brilliant save. Off balance and unorthodox, but that's what this save required from Ken Appleby. Think starting the scramble to break it right side of your screen off the skate and Appleby gets over while making the splits. Break it just took that one extra second to get that puck to the forehand before Appleby got over and made the stop. Ken Appleby, the uh, OHL's goalie of the year, and for good reason. Here's some of his work. There's McDavid in tight. He stopped. Down low, you see Radish working. To break it, Sarah McDavid with a chance. That one goes off the post. Little trouble handling that rebound, but keeps it out. Strom's there. Maximovich gets an opportunity. And Appleby just continues to track the puck. Not always in the best of position and not always looking pretty, but stopping McDavid on that breakaway fired up the crowd. Ken Appleby, who's had to sit for the last couple of years as a backup, watching Daniel Altschiller last year, comes in this year, takes over the number one job, came into this 2015 playoffs with one, count them, one game of OHL playoff experience. And he has answered all the questions that made him the OHL goalie of the year in the regular season with a brilliant performance tonight. Under a minute to go. Dermott over to McDavid. Erie needs three to tie. Castles couldn't clear him. He's knocked down with a high stick. Cole Castles makes a pass to Aiden Wallace. He puts it into the open net. The Generals are going to win the OHL championship. Talked about Cole Castles off the top of the broadcast. The guy's a pro. He's a third round pick. But what a teammate. How unselfish is this play? He's already racked up the free spot. So he says, you know what? Let me help out Aiden Wallace here. He hasn't seen a ton of ice in this game. And really the epitome of team play. You know, you're looking at guys with a lot of ice and wear a letter, play in all these good situations. And you get a guy like Aiden Wallace, who's more of a role player, a part time player. Gets in that two and one with the open net, and Castles made sure to get it. Second goal of the playoffs for Wallace. Fourth point of the game for Cole Castles. The Oshawa Generals. A wonderful regular season. They had a comfortable lead in the Eastern Conference. Came to the playoffs. Five games. They disposed of the Peterborough Peets. Another five it took them to get by the Niagara Stocks. 
six games. They had to battle North Bay, almost losing the first two on home ice. They needed a one nothing overtime win in game two to ensure that they would even up that series and advance to the OHL championship in six games. And now they've stopped Connor McDavid and the powerhouse Erie Otters in five games. Some confusion out there as to whether or not it was going to be an icing. And the clock at one point it stopped at 6.9, then it started to run again. And we'll have to get the timing figured out, but this is over. There's the buzzer. The Oshawa Generals have won the OHL championship and have punched their ticket to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Generals coming into this series despite how dominant they had been. Not many were giving them a chance to win the series the way Erie handled Sault Ste. Marie in the Western Conference Final. And the Generals took care of business. What a season for the Erie Otters, Chris Knobloch, superstars, and the Oshawa Generals just no holes on the team. Well, that's just it. And you get into this championship series, and what are you looking for? Goaltending performance. Check. Special teams to be good. Check. Best players being your best players. Check. Defending well. Check. I mean, you look at a team that's big, that's strong. They're nasty to play against. There's depth in scoring up and down the lineup, and uh, a lot of good things going on in a well-coached hockey club. Congratulations to DJ Smith and the Oshawa Generals. Rob Falls is down in that Oshawa Generals scrum with the big star tonight, Rob. Cole Castles did a job tonight. He did a job throughout this series, and now you're the Ontario Hockey League champion. Right now, love all these guys to death, and you know, it was a team effort in shutting down Connor McDavid and the Erie Otters. Couldn't be more proud of everyone on this team. It's one of those things you had to really wear him down throughout this series. And it certainly worked. Yeah, he's the best player in the world, so he had to try to get in his grill and you know, get him off his game, and we were able to do that. Congratulations. You're going to, you're going to Quebec City. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Connor McDavid. So good. Every team that opposed the Erie Otters this year, they talked about how to shut him down. The Oshawa Generals. Did it better than anyone at the most important time. In two of the five games, they held him pointless. Got the matchups they wanted. Ken Appleby was big when he had to be. And that's a big key to this series. Well, you look at the Windsor connections. Rocco Tulio, the owner from Windsor. You got Eric Wellwood behind the bench. One, two MasterCard Memorial Cups with Windsor as a player. DJ Smith was an associate coach with those two teams. Greg Nemus, who's uh, injured in the American Hockey League this year, former first round pick of the Calgary Flames, has acted as the eye in the sky. Also a Windsor guy. Helping out. One of the great traditions of this great game. North Bay native Ken Appleby. He's backstopped the Generals. Minuscule numbers this year, just fantastic. And he allowed five goals in game four. There's the two starting goalies. His team still won 6-5 in overtime, but he's really bounced back when he's allowed five or six goals in a game. Goes on a terrific run. And here he held Erie to just two. Celebration for the Oshawa Generals. 
They conglomerate in their own end. And Connor McDavid takes a look around. It will be his final exit from a junior hockey ice surface. Good buddy Dylan Strom. Both of those two will hear their names early. McDavid first. Strom, who knows, top five, six players coming up at the NHL draft at sunrise at the end of June. But an amazing job this Oshawa Generals team did in shutting McDavid down, especially in the three games here at the GM Center. Let's check back in with Rob. With Ken Appleby, who wants his hat and his T-shirt. Here we go. When he slid over to me, I said, how do you feel? He said, exhausted. But it's a good kind of exhaustion, isn't it, Ken? Oh, it's unbelievable. The guys suck together all year. And, you know, there's, there's no greater feeling than this after a hard-fought series, all four rounds. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You were quite a story all season long. Your team played so well in front of you, but tonight you had to stand up big and make some huge saves, especially late in that third period. Oh, I, I just tried to make a save whenever I had to, you know. The guys did everything in front of me. They blocked shots for me, and the fans, the fans were unbelievable all series, and, you know, we're going to need that going on to come back. Congratulations to the Ontario Hockey League champion. Thank you. Ken Appleby, what a story. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wayne Gretzky 99 Award is named in honor of Wayne Gretzky, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame and one of the league's most esteemed graduates. The award was created shortly after the great one announced his retirement from hockey in 1999 to honor the most valuable player in the OHL playoffs as selected by members of the media. For the presentation of the Wayne Gretzky 99 Award and the J. Ross Robertson Cup, Please welcome the Commissioner of the Ontario Hockey League, Mr. David Branch. I think first of all, we've had an outstanding season, an incredible playoff, and as you well recognize as great hockey fans, it takes two to make it special, and I'm sure you'll join in acknowledging the great performance, not only by your Jennies, but as well the Erie Otters. Thank you. Thanks for being here, okay? The 99 Award is in honor of a special player and a special person. With an incredible 49 points, it goes to a special person, special player, Connor McDavid of the Uriatos. Congratulations. The Oshawa Generals set a franchise record with 108 points during the regular season. The Oshawa Generals, in capturing their 13th OHL championship, has set an all-time record for most championships in the OHL. To Rocco Tulio and his family, John McMahon, general manager, Roger Hunt, head coach, DJ Smith, coach, Eric Wellwood, the support staff led by Brian Boys, Dave Fox, a very special member of the Generals, and especially to the players, your families, friends, 
and all the great fans of Oshawa and the OHL, congratulations. Josh Brown, come on forward. Bolt Castles deserves to be raising that trophy. There's Dakota Mermis. Think back to game one of the playoffs. We covered games one and two that Oshawa played against Peterborough, and I saw Dakota Mermis after game one, and I said, good start for you guys. Dead Panny looked at me and said, yep, 15 to go. They got it. You can do the math. He's got it. He's got to have some strong shoulders with all the cups he's had to lift in the last couple of years. No question, Ken Appleby is a fan favorite here in Oshawa. His name echoes throughout the building, throughout the game. Interesting to hear his name chanted when Connor McDavid got the Wayne Gretzky Trophy. Deserved for Connor McDavid, but the fans here feel their MVP was Ken Appleby. Yeah, you could make a, a couple of different arguments. I mean. Hard to knock the job that Cole Castles did. And when you look at the entirety, you look at the big picture of this Oshawa team, really, you could probably sit back and select a couple of different MVPs. And that's what makes them dangerous. It's the depth. It's the ability to find a different guy on each night to, to come in and be the guy who's the, who's the key piece. And, you know, you match him up now against the rest of the MasterCard Memorial Cup participants, and you say, we're in for a good one. Following our CHL coverage, SmackDown will air in its entirety on Sportsnet 360. And we will get you to the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners on Sportsnet 1. The Oshawa Generals celebrate their J. Ross Robertson trophy win as OHL champs. And we will hear from Connor McDavid, Rob Falls. We'll be speaking with him momentarily. In the meantime, let's hand things back to the studio. Jeff. RJ, thanks very much. By the way, in the other game going on right now, the QMJHL, the Quebec Ramparts have just scored in overtime. They take a 3-2 series lead over Muski And, John, this one was again on the road. And Nobody yeah. wants to win at home no. in the President's Cup final. Damian Cox and John Very Shannon. quickly in overtime, by the way. So. Yeah, it was uh, over early. So uh, more hockey there on the QMJHL. No more on the Ontario Hockey League. Congratulations, the Oshawa Generals win their 13th OHL championship. And now they send Connor McDavid off to the NHL, and when you look at some of the numbers that Conor McDavid has put up, some are outstanding and, and some are symbolic. If you look at his first year in the OHL, he got 66 points. Yeah. Second year in the OHL, 99 <laughs> points. Playoff <laughs> points, 68 points. Hello, Yaramir Yager. Your checks will face off against Canada in the semifinals of World Championships tomorrow. And now 97 will start to make his mark in the NHL. You know what other number I liked to his? In his first year in Erie with a bad Erie team, minus 24. In his last year of junior hockey, plus 60. And that is a measure, I think, of the player that he became over time in Erie. And really, you could argue he saved that franchise. Now, there's still issues in Erie, what's going to happen with it. But, I mean, this teenage boy went to Erie, not the best junior outpost there is, some would argue, and really turned that franchise around and put it in a much better position. And that's the kind of responsibility you take in Canada and in the Canadian Hockey League 